Happy Sunday, and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our senior pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Our service will begin shortly. Prophetic Encounter 2020 presents The Seven Mountains of Influence and the Church, featuring some dynamic panelists and hosted by our very own Bishop Gregory and Pastor Tanya Dennis on Friday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live at Team KWC, that's T-E-M-K-W-C, or join in the conversation on Zoom by registering at bit.ly forward slash KWC Seven Mountains. Kingdom Kids is back in session every second and third Sunday on Zoom. Please email children'sministry at kingdomworshipcenter.org to register your child and to receive the Zoom meeting information. Join the Young Adult Ministry each and every Wednesday at 9 p.m. for the Fill Up Prayer live on Facebook at KWCYAM. Something happens when the saints pray. The Kingdom Scholarship Partner Launch for the 2020 through 2021 school year is here. Sign up now through November 15th to make a monthly contribution as little as $10 a month by going to bit.ly forward slash KWC scholarship. Join Bishop G each and every Thursday on Facebook Live for Couch Conversations at 7.30 p.m. where he'll be talking about kingdom building during this COVID-19 pandemic and the role we all play. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's outdoor service held at our Columbia campus second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting, at 8.30 a.m. The address is listed on the screen. Make sure you bring your own lawn chair and your mask as we continue to practice social distancing. Then stay and participate in our food pantry giveaway from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Please bring your own bags. Join Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat first and third Mondays at 6 p.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live at Team KWC. Registration is free. Register by the link on the screen to obtain the Zoom information. Our next session is Monday, October 19th, covering domestic violence, featuring Elder Nakia D. Jones and Dr. Kesslin Brady Stannis. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Why not? You can do it now. Just grab your phone, your tablet, or your laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can follow us at KWC Maryland. God bless you and we are so grateful that you joined us today. Service will begin shortly. Happy Sunday, and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our senior pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Our service will begin shortly.
Happy Sunday and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our senior pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Our service will begin shortly. Happy Sunday and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our senior pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Our service will begin shortly. Prophetic Encounter 2020 presents The Seven Mountains of Influence and the Church, featuring some dynamic panelists and hosted by our very own Bishop Gregory and Pastor Tanya Dennis on Friday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live at Team KWC, that's T-E-M-K-W-C, or join in the conversation on Zoom by registering at bit.ly forward slash KWC Seven Mountains. Kingdom Kids is back in session every second and third Sunday on Zoom. Please email children's ministry at kingdomworshipcenter.org to register your child and to receive the Zoom meeting information. Join the young adult ministry each and every Wednesday at 9 p.m. for the Fill Up Prayer live on Facebook at KWCYAM. Something happens when the saints pray. The Kingdom Scholarship Partner Launch for the 2020 through 2021 school year is here. Sign up now through November 15th to make a monthly contribution as little as $10 a month by going to bit.ly forward slash KWC scholarship. Join Bishop G each and every Thursday on Facebook Live for Couch Conversations at 7.30 p.m. where he'll be talking about kingdom building during this COVID-19 pandemic and the role we all play. Are you an essential worshiper? Do you miss the fellowship of the saints? Join us for Kingdom's outdoor service held at our Columbia campus second and fourth Sundays, weather permitting at 8.30 a.m. The address is listed on the screen. 
Make sure you bring your own lawn chair and your mask as we continue to practice social distancing. Then stay and participate in our food pantry giveaway from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Please bring your own bags. Join Abundant Life Ministries for Kingdom Life Chat first and third Mondays at 6 p.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live at Team KWC. Registration is free. Register by the link on the screen to obtain the Zoom information. Our next session is Monday, October 19th, covering domestic violence, featuring Elder Nakia D. Jones and Dr. Kesslin Brady Stannis. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Why not? You can do it now. Just grab your phone, your tablet, or your laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can follow us at KWC Maryland. God bless you and we are so grateful that you joined us today. Service will begin shortly. Happy Sunday and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our senior pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship with us online today. Our service will begin shortly. You can't lose because you're born.
God bless you, people of God. So glad to be with you on this, the Lord's day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that you are having a very, very productive day and your week has been one of tremendous blessing. Uh, as we are going into this place today, I've come. I want to let you know that we definitely miss you. I uh, would love to see your faces. Um, and we will see each other uh, soon, 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 and very soon. Uh, the Lord's been good to us. Uh, morning by morning, there have been brand new mercies in your life. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for how much you love us. We thank you for being the God that never fails us. Thank you for being the God who keeps us. Thank you for being the God uh, who sustains us. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Father who cares, the Father who nurtures, the Father who provides, and we're so grateful for it. Thank you for being our Jehovah Shammah. And we pray, Lord, that even as we are continuing to go through your word on this morning, that your word will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. Cause us to be transitioning, God, from one dimension of glory to the next. We pray, God, that you're being glorified in everything that's being said, everything that is being done, that, God, you are somehow, some way, we know you make the difference in our life. And we honor and we bless your name for it. Thank you, God, for being so faithful to us. Even when we weren't faithful to you, God, you were faithful to us. And we're so grateful for that. Thank you, Lord, for how your power has been resting in this earth and this vessel. We honor you so much for it. So, God, we pray, Lord, that even as we go into your word, cause your word to be healing for us. Cause your word to be life for us. Cause your word to deliver us, to set us free. We believe you, God. Hallelujah. For thee things and we ask them in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now anoint me, your manservant, not to error, not to get into my flesh or to say those things uh, which other men have just articulated, but God calls me to articulate that which is the heart of God, the plan of God for where we are in this season. Cause this word to be one that is timely for the believer. Hallelujah. So we can be uh, effective in the work of ministry and we give you glory and we give you honor for the same in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen I'm so glad to be with you on this morning I want to remind you before we get into the word real deeply on today that this week this week this week you have to join us for our prophetic encounter that's going to ta be taking place on October the 23rd and the 24th as you are with us this week on the 23rd and 24th at 7 p.m. we have our prophetic encounter and we have some amazing amazing persons who will be with us as we take a look at the seven mountains um, and we are believe that there are some things that God has intentionally set up for us to be able to execute in this day in this season so you definitely want to join us for this time of celebration and we look forward to seeing you there there will be some more information that will definitely come forward to let you know exactly how you can be a part of that prophetic encounter now into the Word of God if you would I hope you have your Bibles with you um, if you are at home this morning and streaming these services Services, uh, go ahead and grab your Bibles, your tablets. Um, if it, it might even be better if you just go ahead and get instead of the tablet this morning, get a Bible. Turn the pages. Uh, scientists have proven uh, that we actually are able to retain a little bit more when we are flipping the page and when we're writing uh, and not just typing but writing with our hands and, and fingers that our minds are able to retain some things a little bit more. So, so maybe you go ahead and get your regular Bible this morning. But as you get your Bibles, we're going to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, Hebrews 10. I won't tell my dad joke. I got a dad joke, of course, for Hebrews, uh, but we'll leave that alone. Uh, but Hebrews 10, verse 35. And there we're going to read verse 35 through 39. It reads as such. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall not 
uh, have pleasure shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them whom draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I want us to go forward a little bit, and I'll talk about this probably even more next week. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, very, very familiar passage of Scripture. You know this very well. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. For we are troubled on every side, yet not in stress. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. All right. And the last passage of scripture that we'll just rehearse, that is one that another passage is very familiar to is Philippians 1 and 6. And that is being confident of this very thing, Philippians 1 and 6, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to... Uh, channel our, our thoughts uh, from uh, just for a little while from the subject, don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose. Just type it in if you would. Type it in the screen. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your confidence. Yeah. As we have uh, been in the midst of our fast for uh, we are on a 21-day fast and consecration. I'm hoping that many of you have already rehearsed and seen um, the lesson that has taken place called Shama. There's a Hebrew word uh, that comes up in text that's called Shama, and Shama actually translates as listen, listen, listen. Uh, yeah, you can hear Mother Barnes saying it already. I know, listen, listen, listen. But this word in the Hebrew language, Shama, does not mean listen as we normally uh, think of it. It is not just uh, the mechanical system of our body to be able to hear that which is being said or hear what is happening in the space. But Shama actually would say to us, this Hebrew understanding would say to us that you really are not listening if there is not um, combined with what you hear, what you see, what you perceive, the appropriate response. And so as we look at through this particular uh, lesson, we understand that it is important for us to make sure that it's not just good enough to hear or to be heard, but where we are in this day, there also must be a proper response to what's being heard. I, many of you would probably say that you've heard this or had this same type of experience even in your relationship with others because sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we feel like we're not being heard if someone does not respond accordingly to whatever we've said. So if I tell you uh, that it's hot in the living room and uh, you're standing next to the fan and you don't decide to turn the fan on or switch the AC on after I said it was hot, I feel like that we're in a place where you obviously have not heard what I said. And that is because in this particular example, we expect that Shama means that combined with the actual hearing is the appropriate response. So if you hear what I'm saying, I'm expecting you to do something about it. What I love about this particular passage or this particular thought is in, in the Hebrew language is that there is an expectation that when I go to God, that God is not just hearing me, but God is willing to do something about it. Good God Almighty, I'm getting happy already. Uh, and I, I want to encourage us as believers, as saints of God, 
that God is not just the God who hears your prayers, but he's also the God who's willing to do something about what it is we're going through, what it is we're experiencing, what it is we've testified about. So if there's anything that has shown up in your life, I want you to begin to honor the fact that you have a shama in your life, a God who listens to your every cry, a God who bottles the tears that you have, a God who's willing to, to provide you not just with an ear that is willing to hear whatever your cry is, but a God who's also saying, oh, I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm able to do something. The Bible declares that if you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, he will be found. And if you knock, the door becomes open to you. God is not just a God who's, who's far from you, just waiting to hear your cry. He's the God that's ready to respond to your need. Good. God Almighty, I, I need to encourage some believers this morning who have been, been in the midst of everything that's been happening in this world, and I need you to understand that God is ready, willing, and able to still respond to where we are. Good God Almighty. And uh, that's where we are. We are in this place where God wants to make sure that we know that he is willing to respond. Hallelujah. He is able to respond to our query. He is able to respond to our need. Uh, that's the type of God we serve. I preached a message years ago. I was taking, I took a look at it uh, uh, not too long ago. And when I took a look at the message, I preached a message back in 2006, 14 years ago. And the message I preached in 2006 was called Judge God, Judge God. And, and when I preached that message, I was actually talking about the fact that I was raised up in a way and taught that you should not judge. Uh, and, when, and, and, and it was, it was I don't know if it was actually the lessons that were taught or if it was our interpretation of what we actually heard, that we had to be careful of how we judge. Uh, but that's even that's not even what the scripture says. The scripture actually says judge uh, not or, or judge in the same way that you want to be judged is the way uh, if you would really read that text, the understanding of that scripture is if you judge, make sure you're judging in a way that you want to be judged because that's how it comes out. And so, so as we begin to look at that, uh, I begin to be, as I was young, uh, uh, worried about uh, judging things and judging people and all of those things and judging situations. And then I begin to go through the text. And when I went through the text, I came into Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And when I went through uh, the lineage or the heroes of faith, we, we, we come across a, a lady by the name of Sarah, or Sarai. And when we get there, we understand the Bible declares that she received what she received because she actually judged God. Uh, and judge there means that she actually discerned God. She found out some things about God. And what she judged God to be in that passage of scripture is she judged God to be faithful. And because she judged God to be faithful, could God Almighty, uh, because she judged God to be faithful, then she was able to see, receive the promise of God in her life. And I need to preach to some of us this morning that God not only hears your cry, but as you judge God and discern who God really is to you, that God is going to respond back to you with faithfulness. Good God Almighty. He's going to respond to your cry so that you know that he is the God, hallelujah, of a second chance. That he's the God who heals. That he's the God who sets free. He's the God who delivers. He's the God that makes ways out of none. He's the God, hallelujah, who's more than enough. He's the God who meets your needs but exceeds your expectations. Yes, Yes, that's the God that we serve. But the question becomes is, what do you know about your God? What do you know about your God? What have you discerned about your God? Uh, uh, what have you judged about your God? Because what you've judged about your God is what will open a door or limit, hallelujah, your experience. And I declare to us this morning that we are opening doors we are broadening our understanding of who God is so that we can now expect, hallelujah, a God response that we had not received before. Hallelujah. I was going to go somewhere in the text, but I'm going to leave that alone for a moment. So let's, let's, let's get in the text. Let's get in the text so that you don't think that I'm just sitting up here uh, uh, doing any old thing. The, the, the Bible says here, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. 
your confidence. Now see, it's very important for us here to understand what is happening in this uh, Greek language that is happening in this actual text. This confidence may not be the same way that you think of confidence. When you look at confidence in this actual uh, text, it is the word uh, paraisha. And when you look at that and it's spelled P-A-R-R-H-E-S-I-A. And when you look at that actual word there, the word confidence there actually means do not cast away your bluntness, your frankness, good God, your assurance, your boldness, hallelujah, to be able to come to God boldly. That's why the scripture says come boldly to the throne of grace. Good God, I'm feeling like, and, and so when the Bible says, cast not away your confidence, he's saying, listen, you need to know some things about me, that you are so confident about me, that you still speak to me in a bold way, that you still trust me in a bold way, that you still speak to me, quite frankly, God, I need to let you know what's going on, that God, I'm struggling here, but I believe you can do something about it, that God, I've got a problem in this situation, but I know you can turn things around. God, God, I'm at my wits end, but I know God, you know how to extend my wit. Hallelujah. And so here it is where God, I'm coming to you in a bold way. And the Bible says, cast not away your ability to speak to me in this bold way because it speaks of your confidence in my assurity to respond back to you. Good God Almighty. And so here it is where I know that most of us, we was taught so much, oh, no, you need to come to the Lord so meek and so mumble. But that's not what the writer of Hebrews is saying. The writer of Hebrews is saying, you need to be honest with God. You need to tell God, I don't like what's happening. You need to tell God, I'm not comfortable with the situation. And let God do what God does. I need you to know that God is not intimidated, neither is he's afraid by your reality. So you can tell God, where you are and God will speak to it hallelujah ah let me keep moving let me keep moving ah, cast not away therefore your confidence your uh, your frankness your bluntness ha 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 uh, good God Almighty, uh, so your, 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 your boldness, your assurance, don't let that go away because those things are working for you to have a great recompense of reward. Ah, oh, God, your honesty with God is about to get you a new promise. Good God Almighty, your, your ability to stop, talk with God, frankly, is going to cause God to respond back to you in a way that you did not anticipate. Hallelujah. So in this season, God, let me tell you where I am. Good God, let me tell you where my struggle is. Let me tell you where my problem is. Let me tell you how, where the difficulty is. Let me tell you where I think you're doing well. Let me tell you how great I think you are. Let me tell you how strong I believe you really are. Because see, this frankness does not just speak of my issue, but it also speaks to who I believe God to be. God, I believe you're able. God, I believe you can. God, I believe nothing's impossible for you. God, I believe you love me. God, I believe you're trustworthy. God, I believe you're dependable. And all of these things, hallelujah, cause me to experience a great reward, a great recompense of reward, the Bible says there. And so we want to make sure that's, that's where we are. But the Bible says, though, it says, now listen, listen, I'm going to give you this. It says, uh, for having, though you still in this place, need to have need of patience. That after all you have done the will of God, good God, you might receive the promise. Well, God, you just made the promise and then you told me to be patient. Why would you tell me to be patient, but I'm going to receive the promise? Could it be that my timing is not his timing? Could it be that some of the things that are going to be happening are not necessarily uh, the things that I thought would be happening? Huh. Oh, uh, good God Almighty. So, so in this season of our lives, you still got to make sure you're being patient. God, I trust you. I'm going to be patient. I'm leaning on you, but I got to be patient about it. And see, what is nothing like time to mess with the belief of a believer. Ah, God. I'm going to say that again. I feel like I'm preaching real fast. So I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it slow. But there's nothing like time to mess with the belief of a believer. One of the things that I love about people of the Hebrew faith 
is that, and I've said this before, is that when you begin to talk to them about miracles and signs and wonders, sometimes they start talking about the Exodus in the book of Exodus. They start talking about how they crossed over at the Red Sea and stuff. And you, and you would look at them and say, you, you talk about the Red Sea? Man, that's, that's been a little while ago, hasn't it? <laughs> but, but, but they still have this patience. And, and sometimes as believers in Jesus Christ, we become impatient. We want everything right now. We want it in a hurry. We want God to do it yesterday. We want God to do it last year. But I need you to know that if God didn't do it right now, it's still his promise. Good God Almighty. I'm going to say that again. If God is not doing it right now, it's still his promise. And every promise in God, could God help me preach, is yea and amen. Every promise God gives you is yea and amen. There's not a promise in God that is not coming to pass in our lives. Oh, God. Lord Jesus. Okay. Let me, uh, let me keep talking. Hallelujah. I hope everyone is all right. I hope you're doing well. Hallelujah. Let me, let me jump. I got I to gotta jump so, so that you at least understand why, why um, I put some of these passages of Scripture together. It says, it says now I'll, I'll just read uh, 37 through 39. It says, uh, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just, uh-huh, shall live by faith. Uh-huh. The diakos, uh-huh, the righteous, those who deserve, observe divine laws, uh, those who sense uprightness and righteousness and a virtuous living, they live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we, we are not of them that draw back to perdition. Now, perdition is not a word that we actually use often in our language. So, so let's, let's just do a little bit of homework here. That perdition actually in this passage of scripture uh, means apolia. And, and when you look at that word, it actually means destroying or utter destruction. Listen to this, of vessels. So when we pull back, good God, Pulling back causes us now to experience the destruction of vessels. Y'all, God, the destruction of vessels happens when we pull back from where God is leading us. When we pull back from what God is saying to us, that causes now the destruction of vessels. And that's why uh, it's, it's important for us to understand uh, uh, Corinthians 4 and 7, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, where it says that you have this treasure in earthen vessel, hallelujah, that the excellency of the power, the power may be of God and not of us. Because you are this treasure, you are this vessel that we're trying to make sure can house this treasure. You are this vessel, but when we pull back from the power of God, we pull back from the spirit of God, we pull back from the will of God, we find ourselves in a place where now we're trying to end up doing damage to the vessel. And I need you to know that the vessel has great value. God Almighty, can you just help me preach while you're on your chat, while you're in the midst of everything, and just declare to somebody, your vessel has great value. Who you are has great value. Who God has created you has great value. Yes, you are the Imago Day. You are created in the image and after the likeness of God. Yes, you have been saved by grace. Hallelujah. You've been justified by faith, through faith. And yes, you are. You are of great value. The world loses how some of its edge without you as the body of Christ. Your workplace is not the same when you're not there. You have great value. So don't draw back from the spirit of God because you bring something to the table that others did not know and neither did they anticipate. You have great value. You have something that the world needs. And so as we look through these passages of scripture, hallelujah. Come on, tablet. It says that we are not like those who draw back to a place of destruction, but of them whom believe 
Good God Almighty. I, I, I want us as believers to get back to the place where we declare that I believe God again. I believe what he's doing. I believe what he's saying. And when we go back to where I started with um, the earlier message when I was younger, Judge God, is you got to get back to the place where you determine what is it you've de you discern about God? What is it that you have determined to be true about God? And stop allowing situations and circumstances or things that you see in life to speak more loudly than God himself. See, the Shama experience means that I am digesting everything around me. I am digesting what has happened to my loved ones. I'm digesting what the word of God says. I'm digesting how I feel in my body. I'm digesting what the word says to the situation. I'm digesting where my money is. I'm digesting, hallelujah, the plan. I'm digesting what's happening with health care. I'm digesting what's happening in the political system. And as I'm judging all of these things or digesting all of these things, what I want to encourage you to do is not to lose giving all of that back to God, the God who's not afraid to listen to you so that he can give you an appropriate response. Lord Jesus, the appropriate response for what you're going through, the appropriate response for your challenge, the appropriate response for your life. God is willing and able. He is not death concerning your situation. He's not blind, unable to see where you are. We don't deserve, we don't serve the God, hallelujah, that Elijah talks about was sleep there. Our God is very alive, very awake, and very able. Good God Almighty. Oh my God. Very able. He's able to save us. He's able to heal us. He's able to snatch us out from the hand of the enemy and not just able to snatch us out but can you also declare and he's able to keep us and keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne hallelujah so your God is able he is so able and so I want us even as we are in this season with so many things going on that we declare I trust God in this season and I refuse to go to the place where I'm letting anything to disrupt my confidence. I won't allow anything to disrupt what I sense God saying, sense God doing. I won't let anything disrupt that. Now the Bible says this. Now I'm going now to Philippians 1. Philippians 1 and 6 and it says, And being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, the amazing thing here is that now confident in this passage is not the same word as confidence in the Hebrew passage. Confidence in the Hebrew passage has a different definition. We told you it's talking about frankness and, and, and boldness and it's talking about those things and coming boldly before the throne of grace. That's what, that's what we're talking about in that place, that that's where I am. I, I have that assurance. But here in this place of uh, confident in Philippians 1 and 6, what we look there is we see the word pytho, pytho. And when we look at that word pytho, spelled P-E-I-T-H-O, what we're understanding there is that there is the word persuasion. That's the word uh, to induce uh, uh, by words to believe, good God Almighty. It is talking about uh, to be able to win somebody, good God Almighty. And so what are you saying? And being confident, God is saying, I'm going to win you over, good God Almighty. I'm going to persuade you of this very thing. Did you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? God is going to do the persuading. God is going to do the convincing. God is going to make sure, hallelujah, that you've been won over, which means that God is going to respond appropriately to whatever it is you've been going through. Good God Almighty. And so being confident is that I've been persuaded that God's going to do it. I'm persuaded that God's going to heal. I'm I'm persuaded that God's going to set free. I'm persuaded that God is going to do what God said that God would do. Yes, Hallelujah. I am persuaded. Hallelujah. When I was growing up as a little boy in the church, Hallelujah, they used to sing a song, and I won't sing it because 
I've got haters, but there was a song that they used to sing, and the song said, you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. And they used to say, you can't make me doubt him because I know Good God Almighty, too much about him. Yeah. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage us today to know so much about God that your life, your situations, whatever is speaking around you is unable to interfere with what you know about God. Hallelujah. That's where we are. It's amazing how you can take the scholarly Hebrew language of an ancient years, the Greek of a New Testament scripture, and the old spiritual hymns or the spiritual songs of our experience and find out we've been preaching truth the whole time. Hi, I've got the word of Jesus in my heart. I've got the blood of Jesus in my heart. And you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage us today to make sure that we are living this out and not allowing e anything to disrupt what God has started. What God starts, God finishes. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He doesn't start anything without a perfect plan to how it concludes. So don't allow your middle to cause disruption. Hold on to God. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Life is filled with swift transition. I don't know why we got so many songs, but don't worry about it. Hallelujah. But if you hold on to God, God is committed to hold on to you. The truth of the matter is, is that if you're like me, you've let go of God plenty of times just to find out that God's hand is still holding on to you and he refuses to let go. Trust God. Trust God, believer. Trust God in this season. Don't cast not away thy confidence. Come boldly to God. And let God, through your Shama experience, speak to where you are and bring resolution, bring clarity, bring peace to where you are. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your promise we declare that every promise in you is yea and amen thank you for being the God who doesn't just meet our needs but you exceed our expectations thank you for being faithful to us thank you for being so kind and so loving there's none like you in all of the earth and we pray God that as we continue to live our lives we pray God that you will continue to hear our cry hear our cry, oh Lord. Hear our humble cry and hear our bold cry. Hear, Lord, as we come to you knowing that we have relationship with the Father, knowing that you care for us, and knowing that you have an ability to do something about it. So God, we come boldly to the throne of grace, and we thank you for receiving us, and we thank you for responding, and we give you glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you've got to do this. You have to do this. God has already done so much for you. And I want you to be able to receive what's been done. See, salvation is like, it works like this. It works like the gift that has been left for you that you just forgot was under the tree. I don't know if you've ever done it, but when I was growing up as a child, we used to go to grandma's house. We used to go to mama's house or meme's house or on Christmas day. And when we got there, we would find gifts under the tree. And when I was a little kid, I would always go to the tree looking for my name, hoping that somewhere there were boxes written with Greg's name on it. And there were some times where um, I would get caught up because I had so many cousins that would be there. I wouldn't always look at the back side of the tree. And there were some gifts that I would always leave behind. I don't want you to leave what has been given for you behind. All you have to do is receive it. The gift is already yours. Salvation is yours. It's been paid for. It's free. Hallelujah. 
The law has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. So receive him into your heart. Receive him as, and become a part of the body of Christ. The Bible says that you, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, he's faithful, he's just. He can forgive you of all your unrighteousness. So do that with us today. And after you give God your heart, then find yourself in a Bible-believing church. If you can't go to a church or building right now, stream with us, continue to stream with us right here at kwc.online.church or on YouTube if you're watching us there uh, under Kingdom Worship Center Media on YouTube. We would love you to be a part of our congregation. And we thank you so much for joining us. Now, we, are, we want to make sure we have an opportunity to give to sow into the kingdom of God. So if you would, grab your offerings, grab your, I still, I'm always leaving my phone in the back. Get your offerings, and if you would, get your tablets or, or whatever it is, whatever way you give, uh, if you give electronically, and you're going to go to Cash App or Givelify, or if you're going to go online and type on your computer at kingdomworshipcenter.org, uh, please join us today and tithe tithe. Give generous. We believe that you are generous givers. I need to say this prophetically. I said this uh, a couple weeks back um, on one of the Thursday night conversations. That as the body of Christ, we need to be preparing ourselves right now for a transfer of wealth. So I need us as the body of Christ to make sure that we are setting ourselves up to pay off our debts setting ourselves up to open up multiple accounts, setting up ourselves up to open some businesses that are able to do transactions online and those type of things. Because what we're gonna find in seasons to come is that some, some businesses that needed brick and mortar or felt like they needed brick and mortar are going to be backing up off of their leases, backing up off of their land purchases. And we're going to find that commercial spaces, I'm speaking prophetically right now, commercial spaces are going to be declining in their value. And we need our churches to be positioned in a financial place so that when that decline happens, that they have already been prepared. I'm speaking prophetically. I hope you're grabbing this. Already uh, been prepared for this transfer of wealth because there is no more land that is being created. All the land that is going to be is the land that's already here. And so as we look and we find strip malls now being vacated and unoccupied, then this is going to be the new place, hallelujah, that when you thought you had a storefront church before and you defined your storefront church because it looked like a corner store, now your storefront church is going to look like a shopping center. Hallelujah. This is the transfer of wealth, but we've got to prepare ourselves for it. So please make sure you're giving uh, generously so that we can make sure we're preparing ourselves. And know that as you give generously to the body of Christ, that God gives back to you. You can't beat God's giving. When you give to God, God gives back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Men are going to give in your bosom. So we thank you so much for being with us. Listen, I pray that you have a very productive week. There'll be some announcements following this, but make sure you hold on. Listen to these announcements. Have a very, very blessed, tremendous week. And may the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. God bless you. Thank you for being with us.